Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Libra in the month of December 2018. Hello, hello, Libra. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. All right, Libra, right off the bat, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, or Happy Holidays. Whatever greeting you prefer, whatever greeting applies to you, I send it to you with love and affection and support. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday no matter what you're celebrating, no matter what you're doing, no matter who you're with, okay? I want it to be good, good, good stuff for you guys, all right? All right, uh, Libra, shuffle it off camera. That's your main spread there. What we're going to do now is shuffle for your outcome and your overall energy. Once those cards are out and everything is lying face up, that's when the reading begins. There will be a timestamp in the description box below if you want to go ahead and jump ahead to that point. Also down there, you're going to find information on how to get a personal reading with me if you feel so inclined. If you want to work with me, I want to work with you. It's that simple. Uh, and also down there, and I need to, I suppose, change the message. If you're interested in just like asking me a question, if you need clarity on what a reading really entails, or, you know, if you have other questions, if you want to know about me within reason, <laughs> uh, feel free to email me there and just like put in the subject line that you have a question and it's not about a reading. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get your outcome for December 2018. Ooh. It didn't fall. So let me just calm that down a little bit. What we're going to do now, we're going to get the outcome for Libra in December 2018. Outcome for Libra, December 2018, please. Okay. Thank you. Whoa. That's, we don't take more than two for the outcome, especially when we already have a double out. So we will not take that. All right. Outcome. Feels a little calmer now, which is interesting because you you did have sort of a jumpy general, uh, or as I was shuffling for your general, it was a little jumpy. I will admit that. Okay. Bottom of the deck is the overall energy. Hmm. This seems like extra tight for some reason. Am I not spacing this correctly? How do we look? We look good, but it just feels like extra tight. And I suppose that could be a little bit of a message for somebody out there. It just feels like a little cramped. Even though I've set up this many cards on this board before, it just feels like they're like on top of each other. It's really slightly bothering me, really. <laughs> All right, let's flip the rest of your cards and let's see what's going on, okay? Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, one more. I'm on those. Oh boy. What's going on, Libra? We're going to be here a minute. I can see that. I can tell you that right now. This is going to take a minute to talk about. All right. Um, where's Libra in December 2018? Please show me Libra in December 2018. Please show me. Thank you. Ooh, and you're starting the triplet. That's okay. So this has been happening. Okay, so let me go ahead and before I get into your reading, let me just do this little overall overview. So if you've been with my channel before, you might be familiar with what I call the triplets, where you have one position and it has two cards and it usually makes a trifecta sort of thing. And usually that's a separate storyline or it adds value to the four other cards on the board. That's what I call a triplet. Um, and sometimes they're not really related to each other. Sometimes they are. It depends. And I was consistently getting triplets back in the spring or summer of this year. And then it stopped and now it's back. And it seems to be coming back that some people, I think, what are you? You're the seventh sign, right? You're the seventh sign. I think except for two other signs, five out of the seven or five. Yeah, five out of the seven, I believe, have gotten triplets. And so... Uh, that's slightly significant to me and even more significant is normally when I was getting the triplets earlier this year, I wouldn't start there. That information or that story would come towards the end. And this time around for the month of December, a few signs have had me start in the triplet. So I don't really know what that means. I'll have to meditate on it. Maybe I'll look into uh, some things about consistent starting positions within several different readings. But in any case, Libra, this 
is where we're beginning in your triplet and you come into the excuse me come into december as the 10 of swords so that's a little not pleasant <laughs> uh, ten of swords is a card where we talk about being overworked or stressed out mentally stressed out uh, your brain is basically running on fumes. You might be in your head a lot. You might be really thinking, overload in your thinking or, or thinking too much and psyching yourself out of things. Or you might be uh, mulling something over. Some of you might be agonizing over something. Some of you might be really suffering with the memory of something. Uh, but regardless, for you, Libra, I'm feeling that this is heavily like a burdened energy. It's really unpleasant. Whatever this Ten of Swords is referring to, it could refer to uh, a, another person or circumstances or just your own mental stability right now or your mental fortitude. How clear-minded you are right now might be affected. You know, uh, it is the holiday season, so you might have a lot of irons in the fire you might have a lot of things going on within your family dynamic and you might be having to coordinate travel plans and who's going to stay where who can who can put grandma up in their house who's going to go pick up aunt jane from the airport things like this and so there's just a lot of stuff going on right now and the general feeling here is overwhelmed being like really overwhelmed and like it's really your mental state more than anything else. Physically, you're probably able to do whatever you have to do. You might have enough energy to participate or enough energy to make it through the day, but you're mentally just so exhausted. And, you know, the feeling I get, Libra, is like you're f not fed up, but you're certainly noticing a pattern within your life or a pattern within a certain area of your life that said that makes you go like makes you feel excuse me that it's never ending the moment that you take care of one problem you put out one fire another one on the other side of you starts up and it's like you're constantly having to take care of situations or be the bearer of certain burdens or you have to like I said put out certain fires so you might be you know, the family's diplomat. You might be the person who's the go-between to uh, relatives of yours who don't speak. If you have children, maybe you're having to be sort of the referee between, you know, one of your kids and two of your other kids. You know what I mean? There's this feeling of other people or the circumstances around you, <sighs> like you're obligated to 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 behave a certain way or not to behave a certain way you're obligated to do whatever you have to do to make things happen and you're kind of tired of it you know like a lot is being asked of you or a lot is expected of you and you kind of like for lack of a better phrasing you just want to walk away from it not like walk away forever but you want to break you want to break from this you want to break from having to feel like or having to be responsible for x y and z you know, like you can handle X, maybe you could do Y as well. But the Z is like the, like the straw that breaks the camel's back. It's like one thing after another just keeps happening or, or is being piled onto your plate. And it's just a lot for you to handle. But again, I feel you physically have the energy for it. You physically are able to get up and go and make these appointments or go and pick up relatives from the airport as well as hit the grocery store as well as do the Christmas shopping. You're able to physically do all that stuff, but to coordinate the times and figure out the best route so you don't get stuck in traffic, making sure that, you know, such and such did their part of the deal. It's just like a lot to, you're like you're calculating a lot of how to navigate through all of the tasks, tasks that you have to do every single day, you know, and it's how you're beginning. If I'm honest, this energy feels semi-temporary. I feel like it's for a lot of you going to be the culmination point because it is the holiday season coming off of the Thanksgiving holiday. If you're here in the States, uh, maybe some of you are celebrating birthdays is not you celebrating, but someone in your family has birthdays coming up or friends. Then I feel like you just have a lot of events going on. Like I said, a lot of responsibilities or obligations. And I think eventually, as, 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 as is the rhythm of life, this energy will die down. 
and you will be able to come back to a calmer, more stable, more predictable or secure part in your mentality. But right now you're just like, everything is over the top. Everything is like so much more than you need it to be. And for the reasons behind it, it feels like, and I haven't really held this card and that's interesting. I normally am holding the card while I'm talking and I just noticed that. So there's something there where maybe this feeling of being so mentally exhausted is sort of out of the norm for you. I think Libras often can take a lot on and not let anyone know. Just this is your natural inclination. Like you really would not show that you're stressed out, that you are beyond your breaking point or approaching a breaking point. Most people can't tell that about you. So maybe there's something there. The fact that I had was speaking that whole time and I hadn't had the card in my hand and I just picked it up, but then I put it down again. It could say something about that. Your typical demeanor, your typical way of behaving, your typical way of being received or perceived by other people might not be what is happening. You might be doing things atypically, I think is sort of the message there. Um, but regardless, I feel that like that energy is sort of contained. I think it's sort of right where it needs to be, off in a corner by itself. It's not really near physically the way that I've oriented the cards on the table. It's not really near any other cards. Like it's not touching. Like these cards are pretty much touching. These are very close. So I feel that you have a handle on it. You have a lid on this thing. Is it going to bubble up? Maybe for some of you. Is it going to spill over? Is it going to, you know, cause some type of hamper or, or dampen your, your holiday season? Maybe, but I feel that for the most part, Libra, you're able to work through it. It's just a pain in the ass to have to do it in the first place. You're just like, I don't even want to deal with this or I don't even want to have to help coordinate this Christmas dinner. I'm just showing up as a guest, but because of whatever traditions or because you're known as the family's diplomat, you're known to have great ideas, you're known to be the one who's able to coordinate things very well, your your family, your mother, your father, your cousins, whoever might be really relying on you to help them get everything situated. And you're like, I'm just a guest. I'm not even hosting the dinner, but here I am helping to plan the dinner. I'm just supposed to show up with the green bean casserole or the mac and cheese or whatever. And here I am planning all this other stuff. So it's kind of like you're, you're, you're stepping up to the plate, a lot of you. And you don't really mind it because you know you'll do it and you'll do it well and you want to be helpful. But at the same time, you kind of wish people would not rely on you. Thank you. There it is. Like you don't want to be viewed as the lifesaver or or the the person who can figure things out in a pinch and it's like oh, can't you like call my brother can't you call my sister can't you call our you know your your kids to help you with this why do I have to help you like I'm not even your child but you know you know how it is with family sometimes Libra so I think that's what I'm getting there from from the ten of swords is it just feels like you're you're doing a lot and you're fulfilling your obligations, you're, you're, you're playing your role out as a good, supportive cousin, grandchild, parent, whatever. It's just like a lot. It's a lot for you to do right now. You would much rather have your mental capacities, your mental uh, focus be elsewhere. Okay? Now, above that, you've got the Strength card and the King of Wands. Come on. That's part of the top portion of your triplet all right strength card card of leo partnered with the king of wands fire sign energy so a leo might be significant to you right now but it does not have to be and the other two fire signs are going to be leo or excuse me it's going to be aries and sagittarius so you've got aries leo sagittarius energy but again none of those signs have to really apply or you don't have to see people in your life who are those signs it's really about the energy that uh, that they that they present here and together these two is kind of what I said just now about you don't want to but you can is it's kind of what's going on here you have the strength you have the fortitude you have the wherewithal to take care of business you have the you know this is on that card it's showing like these uh scrubbing pads like brillo pad kind of things like in a in a nice little 
old school <laughs> uh, packaging. And you've got this King of Wands right next to it, which is further showing me this idea of being like, <laughs> being able to handle whatever's tossed at him. Let me start there. Because I think, yeah, thank you. It's going to work better if I talk about these sort of quote unquote in reverse. Um, so the King of Wands would prefer to be as relaxed as he is. He's seated on, what is that, like an easy chair? He's got an ottoman in front of him. He's kicked back or whatever. But you see he's holding this contraption, this thing that he's made because he's got a wrench in his one hand and then he's got the contraption in the other hand. And it's like he made this. He designed this. He's able to do all of the things that each of those ends are, are, are responsible for. He can iron, he can sweep, he can mop, he can do all of that stuff from the comfort of his chair. Now, he's come up a few times in December for other signs. And that energy, or the message rather, from those previous readings kind of carries over into yours. But because you have that Ten of Swords there and it's coupled, and this is coupled with the Strength card, it's just going to be a little bit different. Like, you want to have this leisurely sort of lackadaisical approach to the hard work that you have to do because the king of wands really isn't sweating it he's really not worried about or overly consumed with whatever he's tasked with he can do it and still have fun he can do it and still enjoy himself or 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 you know indulge in his hobbies indulge in his pleasantries he can still get the work done but for you libra i feel like this is sort of a saving grace. Like if you didn't have this here partnered with the strength, things would be more difficult. So he's sort of like where if this was like a difficulty level, if he wasn't here, this, this 10 of swords by itself would be like off the charts. Yeah. Right. He sort of, thank you. He sort of like, he doesn't put out the fires. The energy of this King of Wands isn't helping you put out all the fires, but it is helping you put out at least one or two fires. You see what I mean? So like, it's very helpful energy, but it doesn't alleviate. He's not alleviating. He's not completely eradicating the energy that you have to expend here in the Ten of Swords. Like he's calming those fires. He's like, you know, decreasing the intensity of the demands that are being put on you because you are having to be a little bit creative you are having to sort of think outside the box and do things or or, or take into consideration certain uh elements and facts or 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 moving parts than you have before like maybe this is the first time for some of you maybe you are going to be hosting the christmas dinner or holiday dinner or whatever you're doing and that's, this will be the first time that you have to do it. Or there might be a certain situation where, let's say you've moved recently. And so you've moved to a new city or you moved to a new house, whatever. And the square footage is different. Maybe it's less. Or maybe you don't know where to go to get certain items to make your specialty casserole or something like that. And there's just something new about the situation. Like I said, I get the sense for some of you, it's a moving situation or it's your first time hosting. So you've never had to prepare all the food or the majority of the food before. You've just had to in the past bring over the desserts or bring over, you know, in my house, some people are in charge of bringing the liquor, you know, whatever. Now you have to like make the main course. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to clean the house. You have to do all these things. So there's something about the new stress involved or the new level of stress, the King of Wands is helping you handle that, but he's not as leisurely, he's not as kicked back and relaxed as he could be. I feel there's still like this intensity. I feel like your neck is tense, your hair, you know, your shoulders are hunt, you're scrunched up and your neck is kind of squatted down and like, that's bad for your posture. It's, it's bad for your muscles. I just feel a lot of you might be carrying some type of physical strength or excuse me, some physical stress on top of not only your mental stress. Okay. You still have the energy to get it done because the King of Wands will get the job done no matter what. He doesn't quit. He doesn't walk away. He doesn't say, oh, I can't and forgets, forgets about it and throws his hands off, throws his hands up to the sky and walks away. He will get the job done. He will fulfill his obligations. 
Um, it's just, it will be tight for some of you. It will be very trying. It will be very, again, it's more than what you want to handle. You can handle it. You will handle it. Everything will work out. You're going to have a wonderful, amazing party or a wonderful, amazing dinner. You're going to have a wonderful Christmas day. It's just, it comes at a certain cost. And the other thing partnered with the King of Wands is that strength card that I mentioned before, where... If you think of what this is, a scrubbing pad or a Brillo pad or a, what do you call it? A, um, what do they call? Like Brillo is the brand, but steel pad, right? Steel, steel scrubbing pad, something like that. If you think about how you use that, and some of you might be young where, you know, before the era of stainless steel and nonstick and all that kind of stuff, where you would go to your parents or your grandma's house or your aunt's house or somebody like that. And there'd be a huge, huge pot or pan in the in the kitchen and there would be a box of Brillo pads underneath the sink or in the pantry or something like that and whoever would make some food maybe fry up some chicken maybe fry up some steaks some fish something like that and then what's left in the pan is like this thick very tough gritty grimy nasty oily substance that a regular sponge dish rag just could not handle you bust out the brillo pad and you go to business now that sounds easy but it's not anybody who's ever scrubbed a pan with a brillo pad or some type of scrub i'm, t I'm telling you not not something you could tackle with a sponge but with a, like a scrubbing pad that takes a lot of effort it's not easy that's a heavy duty job and so this strength card is here behind, I feel. He's kind of bolstering and, and feeding into or into um, the King of, King of Wands energy. So the King of Wands on his own is powerful, but I feel like this strength card is following up behind him as like a reserve. So just before you're thinking of throwing in the towel, just before... You're saying, I'm just going to call the whole thing off. I'm going to cancel my flight. I'm not going to do this. Or it doesn't have to be all holiday stuff. This can be in any area of your life. I should have said that earlier. It is a general reading. It will apply to certain people's lives in this aspect, but not in this other aspect. And then it would be vice versa for somebody else. So whatever area of your life this might be hitting in, fill it in there. If it doesn't hit for anything yet, Stick around, we might find something. But if not, it's okay. It's, it's a general reading. It's not going to hit everybody. Now, this strength card is backing him up. Backing up the king of... Excuse me. I want to keep wanting to say the king of swords, so I apologize. But the king of wands. And, like I said, it's here because you normally... Not normally, but... I think for you, Libra, something in your life... Maybe this phase in your life, this time in your life compiled with personal goals and personal things that you're handling, maybe compile, compiled with the stress at work or the stress in a relationship, just the demands that you feel. Yeah, you feel like you're being pulled at from all different angles and you have like no respite. You have no rest. Thank you. You have no rest. Like you're going to sleep every night, but you wake up and you still feel just like bogged down. You have some coffee, you get some espresso, you have a five hour energy drink or a Red Bull or something like that. And you can't, you can't, you just don't feel properly rested. The strength card and the king of wands are doing a fantabulous, why am I saying fantabulous? Whatever. They're doing a fantabulous job of working together and they're getting you through this 10 of swords energy. But I feel like if they weren't here, this would be a whole lot worse for you, if, if I'm honest. Now, that's where you're beginning collectively, I think. You're definitely here primarily, but these two are also here with you in that Ten of Swords energy. You're going to get the job done. You will continue to get the job done if you've been, you know, doing this since Thanksgiving or there before or, or before that time. And you're going to continue to do this till after the holiday season and just feel like it's going to carry you through. It's just your preference, as as would be anybody's preference, is to not have to deal with all that. That's like a lot. Like this together is a lot, okay? For any one person. How you can alleviate that, I don't know. Do you want to or will you be bothered to try and alleviate that? I don't even see that there. I just see 
if this is where you're starting, it's a hell of a thing that you're dealing with. A hell of a thing, okay? Now, in your other four cards, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Busted. A lot of busted energy. Not but okay. <laughs> I'm saying busted in a good way. There's like a shutdown or a breakdown or just like this not it's like a lack of connection over here. Where are we starting? Where are we going first? <sighs> here? Mm, yes and no. Okay, so either way, right? Okay. Here, thank you. Okay, and then we'll talk. Gotcha. All right, so outside of the triplet energy, you have this Eight of Wands card. So I definitely see, I mean, it's pretty literal. If you look at the woman, she's riding a broom. Ha ha ha. You know, insert your Wizard of, <laughs> Wizard of Oz joke now or reference now. Um, but there's this sense for some of you, you may have been traveling. I think I said that some of you have, may have moved recently or you will be moving, uh, in the near future. Um, but there is this on the go energy. There is this moving from one destination to another. So there's some comings and goings happening in your life. Either they have, they're, they're going to happen there right now, or they're soon to happen within, uh, or towards the end rather of December approaching the new year and it's a little it's a little interesting like eight of wands in in general if you are familiar with the tarot in the tr traditional writer weight interpretations eight of wands is usually very fast this also is very fast but what i'm taking note of is the fact that this woman it, she's moving but it's it, and it's fast but the interesting thing is it's sort of like it lacks in preparedness. Like she doesn't have a hat or a headscarf on. What's in her pocket? I guess it's just like a handkerchief. I feel like she's not wearing great shoes for travel. She doesn't have any type of luggage. She just looks like she was maybe running an errand, but then all of a sudden is pulled to do other, you know, that doesn't make sense. Hold on. Like her way of dress is very casual. And I don't know about you. I don't want to be extra casual. I mean, of course we want to be casual when we travel, if we're getting on a plane or a train or anything like that. You want to be casual and you want to be comfortable. But there's just like a lack of comfortability in this. Like those shoes don't look comfortable. Like you're wearing capris. It's December. Why are you wearing capris? Like don't, no. Like dress correctly. Be prepared is kind of what I feel here. So there's like this movement but then also not being prepared for it. So maybe that's it. To go back here to the triplet where I said some of you may, be, may have moved recently or you're in the process of moving or this is your first time hosting uh, your Christmas holiday for your family. And I feel like there is just this unpreparedness. So if you've recently moved into your new home with your family or whatever, or you're by yourself, I don't know what your situation is, whoever, and you're gonna be hosting you agreed to host or somehow you ended up hosting this, this, this dinner, but you don't have everything that you need. It's still in transition. Some of the stuff is still in your storage unit. You sold some at the, at the, at the garage sale, but you didn't mean to whatever. So you might have a certain dish, like a platter that you need to make in a certain roasting pan or something like that, but you don't have a roasting pan anymore, or you never got one for the new house. So there's like this, I have to hurry up and get there. I have to hurry up and get to the store so that I can buy the pan or I need to hurry up and go across town and pick it up from my uncle because he's got one. And it's just like this having to run and gun sort of feeling, having to run and take care of things while you're running. Um, and it's just like, if this had been planned better, it would go better. So for some of you, if you're moving, right now you're not hosting but you're just in general moving or you've recently moved it then becomes more of an income thank you if you've recently moved and this happens you know we see commercials like for home depot or some crap like that and or a storage unit place or whatever and they show a family moving 
and they're all happy and they're carrying boxes out of the out of the moving truck and then they move into the house and then they show you that uh <laughs> what do you call that that montage of them unpacking painting walls the dog runs out in the kitchen the kids are running everywhere and they make it seem like make like uh, unpacking and moving into a new home can be done like in an afternoon no it no <laughs> so I feel for some of you that if you recently moved and you have to travel for the holidays, you might forget some things because you haven't fully unpacked. It's like you wanted to take your comfy pair of slippers, but you forgot your slippers, so you're going to be wearing these patent leather loafers while you're on the plane headed to Des Moines, you know? It's just like, I can't believe I left my slippers. They, I, and you're sitting there kicking yourself because you're like, I know what box they're in. They're in the box. They were in the box marked bedroom, but I left that box in the basement and I don't have my slippers with me. So there's this feeling for me, Libra, that, and if it's not you, it could be someone close to you, someone around you who's significant to you, but there is this feeling of going and going and going and moving so fast, having so many things to do and forgetting some details or leaving some items behind or leaving, in some cases, like a home alone situation, you might, for God's sakes, be leaving a person behind. Uh, unintentionally. Unintentionally, of course. Um, it's not like, you know, Home Alone 6. Kevin, stay your ass here. We're, we're leaving. It's not like that. Where the 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 leaving behind or the forgetfulness is intentional or it causes a huge rift or anything i just feel it's a it's a it's a blatant blatant it's an obvious inconvenience for you to have forgotten an item or have trouble coordinating with your travel partner so you know i've seen I've seen that happen where families are traveling during the holidays and like maybe there are five of you traveling but one of you gets bumped from the flight so then they have to come in on the plane tomorrow and so and then there's a you know the luggage gets lost your luggage is in freaking Houston and you're like we weren't anywhere near Houston why is my luggage in Houston it's like a meet the Fockers situation or something like that okay and it's just you got a lot of crap going on and it, in here and then if that's where you're starting in the four cards and then on the outside of that it's just like too much crap like too much why am I saying too much because uh, the results of this is I feel whatever this situation involves family loved ones relationship partners friends whatever area of your life this is it's an important area of your life. There are important relationships there. We can see that because I feel this Two of Cups energy already. But we're not going to talk about that yet because you've got these two things going on right here. This this Sun and this Six of Cups. Right? And we were going Sun, right? Yeah. So, gosh. If we're talking about a relationship or any type of relationship, family, friends, whoever, or your relationship with all of your family, like your familial energy is like I love these people but for God's sakes am I not happy right now I'm just not okay you've got the sun card in reverse so this whole rigmarole jumping through hoops getting on phone calls emailing people trying to coordinate things luggage lost in Houston Kevin McAllister's left at home in Chicago it's just a whole headache and it's like I love you guys I love this time of year but for God's sakes, am I miserable right now? And the sun card in reverse, the sun card period, you'll see a lot of readers, they will say the sun card is positive no matter what. I don't necessarily subscribe to that because no, it, the way I read, I can't. It's like there's a potential for it there or there's this residual sort of back of house or, or backdrop energy that says yeah at certain times in certain memories or under certain conditions yes these people or this situation would give me pleasure would make me smile would make me happy but right now no it's just not the way it is and again it's not the opposite of love and happiness which would be what hate and the opposite of happiness is what misery or 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 sadness it's not it's not the exact opposite but it is definitely like a 
turn down lesser than energy. This is less than optimal what you're dealing with. Your, your feeling and your attitude is less than optimal, Libra, right now. And I think it's in combination with all that stress that we talked about at the beginning with your triplet and how that's sort of circulating in your mind. It's like in your headspace constantly 24-7 and your body is like running on fumes. You're able to get these things done, but man, would you love a nap? Man, would you love a sound night's sleep? Somebody pass me an Ambien, you know? <laughs> it's like that, but you don't have any Ambien, you don't take medications, and you don't believe in naps. Naps are for suckers. Naps are for people who don't, you know, whatever your reasoning is, you just keep pushing through and you persevere. And you can do it. Like I said, you will do it, but in the process, you're not going to be a happy camper. You might be a little snippy. You might be a little snappy. You might be quite irritable, okay? If you're traveling in those uncomfortable patent leather shoes instead of your comfy slippers, when you touch down in wherever, in Boulder, Colorado, or Portland, Maine, or wherever the hell you're going to meet your family for Christmas, you might be have a little bit of an attitude. You know, you step off the plane, and people are like, oh, labor, we're so happy to see you. You're just like, hi. You're like, oh, are you okay? Was the flight not great? And yeah, I'm okay. And you just want to relax. But there's something about this go, go, go energy, having all this demand on you, having all this expectation on you, having all these things that you have to get done, all these all these irons in the fire that need to be uh, 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 catered to or taken care of. And you're just like, oh, can, a, can I catch a break? Can I get a timeout? Can I get a coffee break? Can I just rest? Can I be, some of you want to be by yourselves. Some of you just want to like have a nice little, like an hour, just an hour or two by yourselves. Let me go soak in a tub. Let me go read a book. Let me go take that nap since I don't believe in Ambien. All right. And some of you just want that to, 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 to get a moment to recuperate, but you're not able to. And the, not irony, but the difficult uh, element I feel here is that, you care too much, Libra, if I'm honest. You care too much about the people around you, if I'm honest. You care too much about them. That's not me saying don't care about them, but what I'm saying is you you are, thank you, you're sacrificing yourself. You're sacrificing your own happiness, your own contentment, your own stability and, and, and ability to feel uh, contented. You're sacrificing that for the bending over backwards. Maybe this is like your, like I said, your first time hosting or your first time getting uh, together with your family in a long time for the holidays, whatever it is. If this is like just a partnership, it, try and apply it. But I'm getting this is more of like a, an encompassing energy. So your partner might be folded into this, your, your spouse, your fiance, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever, as well as the relationship you have with your parents, as well as your relationship that you have with your kids, as well as the relationship that you have with your cousins, with your work mates or, or, or your coworkers or whoever. It's just this accumulation feeling of everything is calling upon you from your perspective to, to step up to the plate. I feel a lot of you are choosing to put yourselves in this corner to allow all of these things to come down and rest on your shoulders. I think some of you are having an issue with saying no or saying you're not available or saying you can't do all of it. You might need some help along the way. So there's this reluctance for you, Libra, to, I think I said it here, to kind of not show weakness, but to express how underprepared you might be or unavailable to 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 fulfill some some duty like it's okay I feel it's okay other people might give you a bit of a hassle about it but let me tell you in reality it's okay if you don't have the there's only 24 hours in a day and you're supposed to sleep at least like what seven or eight of those hours so really in a day there's only about 16 hours at max right <laughs> or if I guess if you sleep less maybe what 20 hours in a day whatever there's only X amount of hours in a day. Why do you believe or why are you pushing yourself to be all that you can be all those hours? If you can't do something, if you don't have the time, you don't have the energy, you don't have the mental fortitude and, and the mental clarity that you need, you don't have the right attitude, you don't have the money in some cases, whatever. If you're not capable of doing it, tell people you're incapable. But I think because you value 
whoever we're talking about, either one or two particular people, however many particular people, or in general. I think you just value the relationships that you have with these other people so much that you are not afraid, but you are quite reluctant to say no. You're very reluctant to say, I can't right now. Could you give me an extension? Do you think I could get it to you? Maybe you want this thing. Someone asked you for something and they're like, can you bring it by my house on Tuesday? And you're like, I can't on Tuesday. I've got way too many things, but if you can wait, I'm going to bring it to you the next day. You won't even say that. You'll just agree and say, okay, I'll get it to you Tuesday. And it's like, no, Libra, tell them you can't. You don't have the time. There's only so many hours in a day. And I feel that here. I feel that what would normally make you happy, which is to be connected with people, which is to feel as if you have a duty, you have a purpose, and you're serving a supportive role. Libra, you're quite a supportive sign. You're very much in, 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 in the interest of helping others and making sure others are happy. Like you love to be the reason someone smiles or the reason someone laughs or the reason someone says, oh my God, I just had to talk to you. You like to have that utility in somebody's life. But if it's at your the sacrifice and for the sake of your own happiness, the sake of your own contentment and peace of mind and restfulness, don't do it. You're just selling yourself short. You're just screwing yourself in the end. And that's not about, you know, people don't appreciate. I feel that people do appreciate you. I just think because you make it seem normal or you make it seem as though it's not costing you anything, that you can do it, you have enough time, you have enough energy, you have enough whatever in your schedule, people just assume that's the norm. And it's like, no, that's not the norm. I'm really like busting my hump trying to do all these things, but nobody knows. So you're unhappy. You're unhappy. You're stressed out. You're unhappy. And like I was saying before I went on that little tangent, you value people so much. You value your connection with them. And I think you're not seeing, maybe you're idolizing something. Some of you. Mm -hmm. Six of Cups reversed. <sighs> So some of you, Six of Cups is traditionally a, a card of nostalgia. It's, it's a card of, you know, people coming back from your past and reuniting with them and, 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 and really, you know, having a kinship with people, having a, having a partnership with people, a great understanding. I'll show you this card up right in case you're not used to this deck, the Housewives Tarot deck. So you can kind of come, become familiar with it. So this, this young lady is drinking this, what, I could use some pink lemonade right now, personally. I, I would love some. But she's drinking this pink lemonade, and she seems really happy. She seems really content. Like, I get, like, you know, the, the image of, like, a you know, a lemonade stand and, like, kids playing in the summertime. And it's just really relaxed. It's really novel. It's really pleasant. But it's reverse. So I think some of you are idolizing that stuff that I was just mentioning in, in, in the upright. Some of you might be thinking, okay, I'll do this favor for my cousin or for my sister. And you're like, oh man, we had such a fun time growing up together, you know, racing bikes down the street or, you know, playing cops and robbers and hide and go seek and all that kind of stuff. And you're like idolizing this past that you've had with this person or that you've had with these people. But it's like you and your sister are both in your 30s or your 40s and your sister has turned into quite a douche, you know. I'm not, I, I don't know anybody personally in this situation, but I'm just saying like you're looking at a person or you're looking at a relationship or you're just looking at certain dynamics between you and others and you're thinking of all the positive things that have transpired between the two of you and that's fine. And you're making that the reason why you should be essentially suffering you're, you're, you're making your suffering okay because you're looking back on it and saying, well, you know, we had a good childhood together and da, 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 da. Therefore, my sister calling me and saying she needs to borrow $300 because she doesn't have enough money of her own to buy Christmas gifts for her kids. I'm just going to give my sister $300. Now, I don't know who you are, Libra, but $300 is nothing to sneeze at. That is, that is a, a significant amount of money. If somebody just gave me $300 now, man, would I feel relieved, but, I, you know, I would feel, damn, I can do something with $300, you know? So, 
some of you are being called upon by other people, not just specifically a sister or a sibling, but it could be several people or one person, or again, a collection of people or the circumstance that you're dealing with. You're being called upon to do more than what you might be capable of or what you might be comfortable with or what you might normally do. And you're just saying, well, I'll do it because of X, Y, Z from the past or, or, you know, it's just like, wait a minute, you and your sister growing up as kids riding bikes and doing all that fun stuff is not the recent past. Like, thank you. You might be going further into the past and thinking about what your relationship was with these people or that person, you know, 20 years ago, instead of like looking at like the past five years or so in the past five years or so have, has things been good with you and your sister? If not, not to say that you should cut her off and no, you'll never get money from me. You, you, no, never. It's not to say no. It's just, and I think I said that some of you don't want to say no. And maybe you don't have to find a compromise. It's like, okay, listen to me. You want three hundred dollars? I don't know about that. I can give you a hundred. Maybe that's the compromise. And if that person or sister, brother, whoever, I don't care who they are, if they are like, can you help me do this? And you're like, I can't help you do all of it, or I can't help you with that full amount. But here's what I can do. You know, can you help me cook the dinner? Can you do this, that, and the other? You know, can you cook three dishes? No, I can't. I'll, I'll cook two and that'll be that you know what I mean don't feel that you have to do all of it whatever this person is asking of you or needing from you or expecting of you some of you it's an expectation it's just like you are interestingly fondly and maybe it's a reparative thing thank you for some of you with that sun card being turned down and this go 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 energy and this feeling of duty of, of, of fulfilling your role. Maybe some of you have a sort of estranged relationship with a relative of yours or a partner of yours and you want to make it up to them this holiday season. You want to, you want to patch things up. So you're saying yes to things that overextend you, that eat into your dollars, that eat into your time, that eat into your energy. And it's just like, I understand that you might want to salvage a relationship. You want to get it put back on the right track or something like that. But if it's going to cost you your, your mental clarity, your energy or your physical health, if it's going to cost you financially, if it's going to cost you another relationship, like you might have two siblings, you know, two sisters maybe. And one sister is, you know, a little, you guys have had a history and it's on and off and it's a little shaky and you want to repair that. But then you have your sister on the other side is like, uh, you should not, do anything with her and so if you reach out to the sister that you've been having the shaky relationship with or the estranged relationship with you might upset the other sister so you're kind of caught between the two and someone might be not necessarily guilting you but certainly making it more difficult for you to to see uh things be copacetic amongst everyone so there might be some in infighting going on okay and again, you might be looking back and thinking, the three of us growing up, we had an amazing time together. But, you know, when this one went off to college and then this one dropped out of high school and da-da-da-da-da. And it's just like you're going back and you're looking at where things went wrong, how things went wrong. And you just want to fix things. I feel like a lot of your energy in this reading, Libra, has been, I want to fix things. I want to make sure that things are okay. I don't want things to be off kilter. I don't want things to be off center. I want things to be fair balanced, healthy, uh, progressive, all that kind of stuff. But if it's at the cost of your personal energy, your mental state, your clarity, all of that stuff, and your emotional, your emotional happiness, and we haven't even talked about that, your emotional happiness and contentment and stability, it's not worth it, bro. It's not worth it. And I, I don't know why I called you bro, but it's not worth it. One second, I need a drink of water here. Okay, so uh, it's very significant to you. Whoever this other person is or whatever collective of people it is, this whole situation, you feel connected to it. You feel very amorous about it. You feel very loving towards this person or again, this group of people or the situation. You just feel, mm, you want to, thank you. You're preserving it. Two of Cups. 
preserving this energy, protecting this energy. You want to be reestablished with this energy. I feel for a lot of you, this energy is distant or it's 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 refreshed in some way it's coming back around it's it has the potential to grow or it has the potential to become solid and stable again you really really want so i again i feel a lot of you are be, are acting um <clears throat> excuse me your your actions are because again you want to fulfill your job or fulfill your role as the negotiator, the diplomat, the one that brings the two sides of the family or the two arguing cousins together, you know, and maybe that's what's going on. You're having a lot of stress because you have two people in your family who are going to, who want to come to the holiday dinners, who want to come to the family dinners or whatever, but they don't want to come if she or he's going to be there. If he's going to be there, I'm not coming. And then the other person is saying the same thing. If she's going to be there, I'm not coming. And so you're kind of going in between them being like, listen, you're not telling them that you're talking to both of them, but you're trying to ingratiate yourselves and ingratiate them towards each other. Hey, remember... When we were kids and we went on that camping trip back in, you know, 94, you remember that? And then and both of them are like, yeah, I remember. And you're like, okay, good. They both remember this trip. They both seem to have good memories about it. But then they both, again, turn that energy as like, well, that was the year that Sally did this. And that was the year that Tommy did that. And it just bubbles up again. And there's this tension between two people. And you're in the middle trying to, you know, essentially calm those waters and get those people bonded again. Or you're trying to bond yourself with somebody that you're estranged from. Whatever it is, it is this inclusive, very harmonious energy with the Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups is, you know, a quote unquote a soulmate card. A lot of people will describe it as a soulmate card. For you, that could be the case. Some of you could be dealing specifically with your relationship with one other person. And it's a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. But a lot of your energy, Libra, if I'm honest, it feels very collective. It feels very much focused on family and or family and friends. And just this cohesive energy between you and multiple other people you want to be copacetic and chill and just vibing and happy and positive amongst or, or, or amid all of your relationships there might be one or two of significance maybe a relationship with a cousin a mother a lover whoever you want that's like the pinnacle or or or, or the, the the central concern but I hope that follows. I, I hope you get what I, I hope you get what I'm saying here. There might be one or two relationships that are your focal points, but in general, you want all of your relationships to mimic what you're focused on or mimic that connection and that closeness that you feel or that you want to preserve with one person. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, and it's interesting because, hmm. I think I said before this Ten of Swords is kind of like on its own island sort of sort of isolated from these other energies there's a lesser but still kind of very distinct boxing off or setting aside of this energy and again it's this is more of like it's iced out it's like short-lived you'll be over it soon this I think I said that when I picked the card up this is like I want to protect this. I want to salvage this. I want to to guard this energy. There's this feeling of this is very much close to you, this relationship or the energy of this card. And, and, and you want to make sure that this will be available to you going forward. So for some of you, this holiday season could be a turning point. This could be like you might be saying to yourself or someone might be saying to you, this is the last time. This is the last time I'm going to come to one of these damn holiday parties. This is the last time I'm going to sit in a room with that person. This is the last time. And so if that, if the stakes are that high, that this is the last time you have a chance at, at, at bridging a gap between yourself or between other people and you're kind of the middleman, you're kind of the negotiator. If this is the last time Libra, that would, that would make sense to me. You're moving fast. You're trying to coordinate things. You're trying to make sure all the pieces kind of fit together and that stresses you out. It's not happy. You, you just wish everybody would just get along and, 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 and under, get past their differences, get past the pain from the past, you know? 
and that six of cups, you're, you're idolizing or you're able to connect easily with the joyous times from the past, but at the same time, being focused on that part of it negates all the, all the negative stuff or ignores all the negative stuff. And that, that might be helpful in the sense of it keeps you motivated if you think about the positive things and not the negative things because if you think about the negative things if you think about the arguments the, the times where people weren't getting along the the times when people were at each other's throats you might say well to hell with it i'm not i'm not getting involved but like i said you like to feel useful you like to feel as if you're able to not make but encourage people to see past their differences and see that things are better together than they are apart and that might help you in a strange way by not focusing on that negative stuff to kind of push it to the wayside and to keep that positive energy or the the memory of those positive or the memory of those positive times as a goal it might help motivate you so for some of you that kind of works it might make things a little bit less realistic maybe even a little less um achievable but you know, you're, you're not deterred no matter how you slice this. You're going to do what I've just told you you're going to do. You know, <laughs> you're going to try your best to make sure everybody gets along and everybody has a good time. You don't want people fighting. You don't want people walking out of the room because, you know, Grandpa Joe just stepped in. So Grandpa Joe is, is heavy on the homophobia and therefore your cousin Rick has to get up and leave. Like, you don't want to see that happen. So you're going to try your best to make Grandpa Joe understand that Cousin Rick, you know, is not, you know, crazy, doesn't, you know, whatever you're doing. You will not be deterred from trying to make things happen and make things go along smoothly. Make sure that people are having a good time. Everybody's happy. Everybody's joyous. Everybody just shares love and affection. You, you just, it's in you to want to, to see that happen right now okay now your outcome for december you've got the devil card which is interesting <laughs> interesting because this is totally not anything like the devil card in the traditional tarot it's also interesting that everything i said i think might initially seem unrelated to the devil card for some people in any case devil card card of capricorn so it might be a capricorn of significance in your life Libra but it doesn't have to be and this devil card is basically showing you what's what's said there on the pack of cigarettes in the top right corner right vice addictions making not so great choices and making those great not so great choices over and over again so for some of you you might be dealing with someone who has this issue they might have an addiction problem they might have uh, an issue with their judgment. Like I said, Grandpa Joe might be a little homophobic and then you've got a cousin or a brother or a sister or it could be you and Grandpa Joe and the gays just don't mix. And so that could be an issue that you or you're dealing with someone that is adhering to or, or, or clenching to ideals and behaviors or philosophies that are not positive. They're actually damaging, okay? Um, but if it's not about that, it would then speak more to indulgence. So you might have people who are indulging and some people, some people like that. Like you might have someone coming around you in the holiday season, or you might be dealing with people who, for lack of a better word or lack of a better phrasing, kind of like to see other people suffer, like to see other people under pressure, like to see other people squirm and, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. In that case, <sighs> I think you should distance yourself from this person. They might directly be involved with you or they might be in your peripheral. They might be like a second or third person. Like it could be like your sister's boyfriend who's kind of a jerk. And so he likes to come in to your family gatherings and like talk a bunch of crap and try to get a rise out of you or try to get a rise out of, you know, other members of your family. And you know, your sister's not really serious about this guy and he's just like this temporary nuisance. So in that case where someone's just like a troublemaker, 
intentionally, deliberately trying to get a rise out of people, deliberately trying to stir the pot, ignore them is, is what I'm feeling. Ignore them or acknowledge what they're doing. Like, oh, I see you're trying to stir the, like take that power. Like they think they have some type of grand influence in the situation. They think that their comments are really bothering people or they think that their behavior is going to destabilize something and you should let them know, oh, I see what you're doing. I see you're trying to cause a stir here in our family. I see that you're trying to, you know, talk crap. And I'm I'm glad that you think you have this power, but you don't. So you want to, as much as they're trying to destabilize the situation or destabilize the social gatherings or destabilize the energy and the positivity in a group, you should throw it right back in their face. Oh, I see what you're trying to do. You can, you can take that back to where you got it from because that's not going to fly right now, okay? So either ignore it or meet them where they stand, basically. You want to be petty? You want to be shysty? You want to say all this stuff? Well, I can do it too, you know? Uh, so you can, obviously, you always can choose, but I would, I think those are your two best bets when dealing with this. Again, it's like a peripheral person, like they're secondary or, or tertiary in your storyline. Like they're there, but they're not like a key player. It's like, who the hell are you? Like somebody's understudy. Like get the hell out of here. You're not even important to the main story here. You're not important to the main cast of characters here. You're just some extra. Go somewhere, you know? <laughs> um... And so, yeah, I think like the devil card right for you right now coming in your outcome is just showing that your hard work isn't over. Not to say it's not going to pay off. I think for a lot of you, not not everyone, but I think a lot of you, it will pay off. I think a lot of you will see some type of gain, some type of positive progression due to all that you're doing here and all that you're dealing with here. Some of you are not. Some of you are absolutely not going to see anything come from it and you're going to be a little disappointed. Um, but this coming in your outcome, I think is just to show that not everyone around you is going to be able to get what you're doing. Not everyone around you is going to appreciate what you're trying to do. They're not going to appreciate your circumstances. They're going to be very, uh, incapable of, of being sympathetic to you, Libra. Like I said, for some of you, where you're kind of in between two siblings who don't get along and you're trying to make them get along, or other family members or friends or whoever, and you're trying to bridge that gap, some people will not appreciate you trying to bridge that gap. And they're going to stick to this divisive, they can stay where, like, this person and I don't get along and that's just the end of it. And that's, that's the reality they want to live in because they're hurt, they're angry, they're sad, whatever reason, with the other person, not with you specifically, but they're just like done with the other person. So you might have Uncle Joe, you know, say, I will never accept, you know, my grandson Rick or my brother or, or whoever, Grandpa Joe, the homophobe, you know, he might say straight up, I will not ever accept a gay relative of mine. I just won't. And you leave her like, but Uncle Joe. Come on, you've known Rick his entire life. You guys used to be close when he, you know, when he was growing up. You guys have all these great memories together, all the fishing trips, all the hunting, <laughs> hunting trips, sure, whatever. Whatever Uncle Joe and Rick used to do as kid, when, when, when Rick was a kid. And you're trying to tell Uncle Joe, listen, Uncle Joe or Grandpa Joe or whoever, like, let that go. Like, remember all that good stuff. And, and Grandpa Joe, Uncle Joe is just like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. I can't accept it. It's not right. I can't accept it. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in this. I can't support that. Da 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 da. And that person's just gonna be who they are. And you need to let them be. Okay. Yes, that's that's what's going on here. For some things, Libra, you have to let it be. Some people have their own trauma, their own drama, their own mistakes or their own misgivings that they have to deal with or that they have to live with. And they're here for a reason. Like I have to say that. Like, I don't want to make it seem like homophobia is okay. And if someone says, you know, I don't accept this person in my family and I disown them, they're going to go to hell. I don't, I don't want to speak to them. It's not to say like, you should just say, okay, that's fine. And, you know, carry on. But I think it's what I, what I, what I want to say is they have their own journey that they have to go through. And your attempt to bridge that gap is noble. I think you're dealing with your own 
life lessons that and that caused you to react that way but if someone doesn't accept that doesn't accept your attempt to 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 mend those fences or whatever and to see a better day for tomorrow in the future for other people in their relationships and how they get along if they don't want to take that ride with with you or they don't want to take you up on that offer they don't have to and you have to let them be where they are some people are not meant to transcend unfortunately this is and this might sound a little mm, dismissive or or sort of patronizing but some people are just not going to learn their lessons in this lifetime and that's it they're just not they're just not going to get it this time around they might need to endure an entire human lifetime of ostracizing others of rejecting others so that the next time around they can appreciate their relationships with others that they can appreciate the connection and the bonds that they make with other people and to not take those connections for granted so grandpa joe or uncle joe might go to the grave as a homophobe might be on his headstone here lies uncle joe here lies grandpa joe total homophobe and that's it. and that's the legacy they live and then the next time around for whatever reason whatever karma they've built up if you believe in that whatever lessons you know that are carrying over they will face them again maybe differently maybe on the other side perhaps who knows if you can't fix that in this lifetime, if you can't, like I said, mend those fences or be an assistant in mending those fences, that's what was supposed to happen. So for somebody, you have a bit of an expectation of this huge change or this huge overhaul in a relationship between you and someone else or two other people that you know or whatever it is. And it's just like, mm, it might not work out that way. Because someone is adhering to their demons, to their trauma, to their bigotry, to whatever. They are stuck in it. And that's their business, to be stuck. You can't unstick some people. You just can't. Okay? Now, your overall energy for December, Libra, is the Emperor card. So a lot of fire energy, because this is also, or this is the card of Aries. And earlier you did have Leo, which is another fire sign. You've got a lot of wands. There's, so there's a lot of physical demands going on here. There's a lot of physical energy here. So again, I feel a lot of you are coming and going. A lot of you are traveling. Like I said, some of you have moved. It's just a lot of physical dynamic energy. And the emperor being your overall is, you know, the emperor is very much, he's steadfast. He's strong. He has the wherewithal. I mean, his body's made of tin cans, right? But what I'm getting is like, he is just like adhering to his beliefs. He's very, 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 <laughs> very, <laughs> uh, um, aligned with his own belief system not to say that he's like on this megalomaniac i am the greatest i am my own god it's not like that but whatever this whoever the emperor is and i feel like you're tapping into this energy is the emperor is willing to die for his beliefs and i think to you know not to be super hyperbolic but here we go Libra, I think that you right now are willing to die for your beliefs. Not necessarily literally, but you're willing to put up a hell of a fight. And you're willing to go the distance because of what you believe in. So I'm going to go right back to Uncle Joe, Grandpa Joe, whatever. If you, even though I just told you, let so, some, some of you are going to have to let Uncle Joe or Grandpa Joe be. Like they're just going to have to be a bigot until they die. I'm telling you that. Some of you will not accept that. Some of you will say, well, I'm going to keep talking to him and I'm going to keep trying. And that might be what you need to do. That might be the path that you need to walk. Somebody who just carries out their convictions, even if it means consistent or constant, quote unquote, defeat or never really making much ground. And, and that's the thing. We don't know, you know. Grandpa Joe can get to his deathbed and on his deathbed, he might come to some realization. I was wrong to disown my son or my, my brother, my grandson, whoever, for being gay. In the last moments of his life, he might come to that realization. And you might have had a hand in that because you were persistent with your emperor energy that you kept on to him. And you kept telling him, Grandpa Joe, I just really think you, sh you, you have to really you know, open your heart up or open your mind and really release some of whatever you're thinking or feeling about Rick. 
and I'm using these names and I'm using these genders. This could be a total female dynamic. This could not be about homosexuality. This could be, like I said, here in the double card, double card can talk about addictions, can talk about vices. So it could be, and that, and some people are like that. Some people are like that. Like if you are a drug addict or if you are an alcoholic, I can't even look at you. I'm ashamed of you. You know, whatever it is. There's a judging going on regardless. There is someone judging or someone who is ostracized or at a distance or made to feel ostracized and at a distance because of their quote unquote choices or because of their way of being in some of your cases. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, again, I'm sticking with this one example just for consistency, but apply it to different areas if it's not you know, an issue of homosexuality, it would be something else potentially in your lives. So you stay, let's say you stay encouraging Grandpa Joe to give up his bigotry, so to speak, or open up his mind, open up his heart and be more accepting of family members and people who happen to be gay, right? Your energy, I feel, I feel you're very much aligned with this emperor energy is I'm going to go toe to toe and not like in this adversarial fighting type way but you're just not going to relent you believe very strongly in whatever you believe libra and you are not necessarily trying to argue for the sake of winning you really are arguing and you're pleading and you're having conversations you're 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 having discussions because you want to see a better future for everybody you don't say this just so you can say, well, I, <laughs> you know, I was the one who got Grandpa Joe to not hate Rick. It's not for the accolades. It's not to be, it's not, to, it's not to be rewarded or, or you want to be seen as some type of hero. That's not the reason. The reason is the emperor is interested in cohesion. The emperor is, is interested in maintaining cohesion between him and all the members of his kingdom, all the members of his empire. And he wants it to be based off of things that he believes in. So if your house, Libra, is a house that is full of acceptance, is full of, of support and love for people, we don't, even if our relatives are some of the most difficult people to deal with on this earth, we're not ever, 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 ever going to disown anyone. We're not ever, 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 ever going to turn our backs on any of them. That might be your core belief. And you might be stepping up as the new patriarch or the new matriarch in your family, you know, passing the baton, older generations, you know, they just can't, you know, be in charge forever. So in your new dynamic, the way that you want to see your family prosper or you want to see your, your friendship circle continue going forward is, well, we're not, we're no longer going to, you know, make jokes at Rick's expense. We're just not. It's not tolerated in my house. Grandpa Joe, so if you want to come and you want to share in Christmas at my house or Hanukkah at my house or whatever the hell we're doing, you need to respect the people that come into my home. And Grandpa Joe says, okay, I will. And then Grandpa Joe gets there and he relent or he reneges on that agreement and he insults Rick. He insults whoever. And you remind Grandpa Joe, I said that when you come here, you have to do this. I need you to respect so and so I need you to you know not make these comments not get involved in these arguments whatever you're asking and ultimately the emperor is a peacekeeper but he's not a softy about it he's very convict he's he has deep convictions and like I said he's willing to die for them very figuratively I don't want you to literally get into like some type of physical altercation or a duel or something God forbid. But it's very strong, very adamant energy, very adamant that I want things to go a certain way. And it's for the betterment of everybody. If if you guys listen to me, and it's not necessarily about ego. The Emperor card and the energy behind that being Aries energy can be a little conceited, can be slightly egotistical, but it is usually encompassing this idea of everybody's going to benefit from my idea. If you all just agree to work with me and support this idea, I guarantee you we're all going to be happy campers, okay? So that's your reading for December, Libra. Pretty straightforward. Like This has been one of the most easy readings for me to get through in terms of what I was presented with, in terms of what I heard, what I saw. So I feel good about it. 
If you feel good about it, uh, please hit the like button. You'll see it down below. You can also leave comments on the video. I would love to hear how these messages resonate with people. And if you don't want to leave them publicly, just email me and I'll read them and I will appreciate them just the same. Uh, there's also buttons down below for subscriptions and sharing if you want to do that. And I will be back quite soon, probably next week if I'm smart. If I'm really smart and diligent, it should be next week. Uh, but I'll be back soon uh, when I do your January 2019 general readings, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching up until this point. Take care.